With one of the best mid-range processors, 6 gigs of RAM, a triple camera system, 128 gigs of onboard storage and a large 6.3 inch display, the Galaxy M40 is a pretty sweet deal at just 19,990 rupees. And given this price point, I think the Galaxy M40 does come up with some really awesome features. Alright, let's get on with the unboxing and see everything that we get with the box. So that's the Galaxy M40. First impressions, it's really lightweight and I think it's very well sized. But let's talk more about it shortly. That's the 15 watt fast charger. I'm really happy that Samsung's providing this with its Galaxy M mid-range series. Great addition. A Type-C cable for data syncing and charging. And you get Type-C earphones, which means possibly no earphone jack. That's the ejection pin. And then the last thing left is probably, okay, only documentation. There's no cover or case. So that's it in the box. So here's the Galaxy M40. And when you look at it, there are really two things that stand out. The midnight blue color and the camera cutout. And the fact that Samsung's been able to give this camera cutout in its mid-range M-series smartphones, which is available only in the Galaxy S10 flagship series, I think it's very interesting. And then you have the triple camera system, which contains one regular lens, one ultra wide lens, and a depth sensor for those beautiful background blur shots. And I've taken a lot of videos and pictures, and I'll show those as samples later in the video. At the bottom, you get a Type-C charging port and the M40 supports fast charging, which is another new addition in the M-series smartphones. But here's the big news. No earphone jack and you don't get any adapter to connect your old earphones either. You do get a pair of Type-C earphones in the box, but they may not be as good as the ones that you already have. There's a physical fingerprint sensor at the back, which I really prefer over any in-display fingerprint sensors, which are slow and unpredictable. These are the fastest and I think it's placed pretty appropriately as well. So in terms of build and design, the device has a very good size and it fits very well in hand, not too heavy and feels really well balanced. At the back, the camera unit does elevate a little, but that doesn't seem like much of a problem. It's all plastic, which keeps the weight light. However, it doesn't feel cheap or of poor quality despite the low price point. And of course, the camera hole cutout is the newest update in the Galaxy M series and the M40 is the only phone to have this after the Galaxy S10e. Though the side bezels are thin, they're not very thin, so you can clearly see them. And we know that there are many phones that do offer a slightly more immersive display experience. But again, you know, if you look at the chin, it's not too thick. I mean, Samsung's come a long way, I think. And these bezels, after some time, you just wouldn't notice them. You'll get so used to it. You get a hybrid tray, so you can either use two SIM cards at the same time, or you can use one SIM card and one micro SD card with up to 512 gigs of storage capacity. Overall, it's a pretty lightweight phone, very well-sized and feels semi-premium, just like a mid-ranger phone should. Moving on to the software, the Galaxy M40 is running Android 9 Pie with Samsung One UI version 1.1, which is the same that you get in the Galaxy S10 series. So you almost get a flagship software experience on the M40, but some features would definitely be missing. But since it's Samsung One UI, you get all the perks of one-handed experience, which is, I think, one of the best in any smartphone. But the always-on display is missing. So this is the Galaxy S10 Plus, which has the always-on display. You see that it does tell me the time, the date, and the notification, if any. But if I look at the Galaxy M40, the always-on display is missing, so I would never know if in case there was a notification, or even the time and date if I just want a glance. The S10 Plus does provide for notifications around the LED, so let's hope Samsung can come up with a software update to allow for that on its camera ring. All right, moving on. Now, every time you unlock, you're presented with a lock screen that contains a story. Now, these lock screen stories change each time you lock and unlock your display. You can get more information about that particular lock screen story, and you could just flip or you could slide to access more of these. There's actually a setting inside lock screen where you could go to lock screen stories setting and you can choose categories from where you do want this feed, or you can turn it off completely. At the back, there's a fingerprint sensor, which is pretty fast and I really like it. It's got face unlock as well, which works equally well. And I would prefer this even over the fingerprint sensor. Now the M40 does not come with too many apps preloaded. They're all the basic apps. You know, there are some Samsung goodies inside the Samsung folder. You get all the basic Google apps and then there are some Microsoft apps built in too. Now, a lot of these apps were installed later. But in general, you don't get too many apps installed and that's great. Okay, moving on, there's also a night mode that I've already enabled, but you can disable that and have the regular white theme. 
And the M40 also comes with Dolby Atmos mode that can be enabled only after you've plugged in your earphones. And trust me guys, this is something to really try. I mean, if you're watching Netflix, YouTube or listening to music, just try turning into the Dolby Atmos mode and you'll really feel the difference in the sound quality. Now, of course, it doesn't stop there. You can go into your settings, you know, you could uh, configure motions and gestures to really personalize and customize the Galaxy M40 to work according to your preferences. Coming to the display, the Galaxy M40 supports a 6.3 inch TFT FHD Plus display. So you get a really high quality, crisp, sharp viewing experience given the high resolution. But TFT is not known to be as great as the IPS LCD or Super AMOLED displays. I know the M30 had Super AMOLED, would have expected M40 to be the same. Nevertheless, the colors do look really good. They look really natural. I also like the brightness of the display. So even if you know, you're someone who uses your phone outdoors a lot in bright sunlight, you really wouldn't have a lot of problems reading in bright sunlight. But here's what's important. It's a 6.3 inch large display. So whether you're playing games or you're watching movies or you just, you know, on Netflix or Hotstar, uh, you would really have a very immersive experience. I mean, it's just a big screen, so you're gonna really enjoy no matter what you do. Uh, sure, there are larger displays out there, but I think this is a very well-balanced screen size. It doesn't increase the size of your phone too much, so it's, it's pretty good. And now let's come to the performance. The M40 is running Snapdragon 675, which is a fairly new processor. It's fast, it's very battery efficient, and delivers a pretty good performance for a mid-range processor. You also get six gigs of RAM, and all of this leads to a benchmark score of about 170,000, which as you can see, beats nearly 40% of all smartphone users out there. But it is still very, very far behind from all the high-end performance flagship devices, and that's okay given the price point that the Galaxy M40 comes in. But let's just try out a few games, and the first one I tried was PUBG. The best part is it shows high, as its graphic quality by default, which is very, very good news. I mean, you can really feel it in the gameplay right in front of you here. Just look at the textures, look at the shadows, look at the detailing, and just look at the overall smoothness of the gameplay. There's absolutely no hitch. The frame rates are absolutely consistent. They're just not, I mean, there's no lag, and this is an online multiplayer game, so, of course, I'm on my wireless network and not on the on 4G, but still, I think it's doing a great job. It's really smooth and no hassles whatsoever. But let's try Asphalt, which seems to be not as well optimized for lower end phones that I've experienced. And let's see how that feels on the Galaxy M40. Now, at first, it did have a few frame drops, but I think it's playing, it's playing decently well. You know, it's not super smooth, like I experienced on the Galaxy uh, S10 or the OnePlus 7, but that's all right because those smartphones are performance beasts and they cost like three and four times the Galaxy M40. And here's Modern Combat 5, which tends to be better optimized even for low-end smartphones. So it's, it's always uh, more smooth and uh, the gameplay is a lot more consistent, even if the phone is not that superbly high performing. But again, on the Galaxy M40, it's playing very well. Uh, if you look at the the shadows, the way the light is falling and all the gradient that's that's there, I think it's pretty good. And I'm really, really, really impressed by how good the gaming performance of this device is. I really wasn't expecting that the M40 will play all of these games without any issues. Just, I think I'm really impressed. And finally, coming to the camera. Samsung's been integrating a tri-camera setup at the back of many phones and M40 is one of them. The main lens is a 32 megapixel lens with an aperture of f1.7 which means you can get some really good low light shots as well. So here are some samples that I took using the main camera and all of these are available for downloads so you can see for yourself and judge on the quality. But these shots that I took, I think they look really good even after I transferred them to the computer and I was just going through them, I think they look really nice. Of course, they look even better on the phone screen, which is where you would be looking primarily. Now coming to the next lens, which is an eight megapixel ultra wide lens. And to enable that, you go into the software, the camera app, and then you just make that switch. Now here's a shot that I took using the regular lens. And then I switched to ultra wide and just look at 
the breadth of the image that I could capture just so much more in the same shot. I was really lucky to get this shot as well. I was just out with my dog at a pool party. And here's another example. So this is one angle, the primary lens, and then you switch to ultra wide and you get that. So I think it's really, really good. And just how much information uh, you're able to capture in a, in a particular landscape. And to the third lens, which is a portrait lens. And to enable that, you just go into your camera software and you shift to live focus. And here are some samples that I took. And guys, it was amazing that this camera at this price point can do such a phenomenal job with portrait shots. Just look at these. I got them all in one shot and I didn't have to do any editing, nothing. These are just right out of the camera. It looks great. The camera app in itself is fairly straightforward. You get all your modes lined up. So you've got hyperlapse, you've got slow motion, super slow motion, and I do have a video for that I'll sh shortly show. There's of course regular video mode. You can shoot up to full HD FP uh, 60 FPS. There's panorama and there's pro mode. So here's a super slow-mo video that I took. Of course, you need really good lighting. So make sure that you're out somewhere and not like indoors. And then you could also get 60 FPS, super smooth, full HD videos. You can shoot 4K videos as well, but I'm just showing you because this video is shot in, in full HD. So I'm showing a full HD sample. So it's not as stable. I mean, there's obviously shake while you're walking, but if you're not walking and you're just panning your camera, I think it's a pretty stable shot. And here's another example, I was just out in the park. Uh, again, while I walk, I think there's quite a bit of shake. So you might have some complaints with that, but guys, at this price point, it's tough to get optical image stabilization. It's only offered, offered in like the good cameras that are really flagship in their nature, and they cost three to four times more than the Galaxy M40. It does adapt to the light very weirdly. You see how it changes the white balance, but that was something off. And now coming to the battery life. You get a 3500 milliampere hour battery, which doesn't sound a lot. Uh, it will last you an entire day with moderate use. But in case you're the kind who commutes a lot, watches a lot of video and is constantly on like WhatsApp or Facebook, you might have to charge it sometime during the evening to ensure you stay powered all through the night. Now, the good thing is that unlike other M-series smartphones, you do get a fast charger in the package. So, you can charge your M40 faster than any other Galaxy M smartphone and you could just, you know, carry on. So that's a pretty good plus. Overall, the Galaxy M40 seems like a fairly value for money deal. One of the best devices in the segment for gaming and taking pictures. Large display, yet a very convenient grip and comfortable use. Of course, there are a couple of setbacks. There's no LED notification, no always on display, no headphone jack, and I would say average battery capacity but these are just a few things that might hold you back and might want you to reconsider. But I would still go ahead and say that it does offer excellent value for money. So if you don't want to stretch your budget and you're looking for a phone from one of the best smartphone makers around the world, the Galaxy M40 is probably your answer for that. So that's it from me guys. Hope you really enjoyed the review. If you've got any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below and I'm gonna answer them to my best capability. Uh, thank you for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button.